Mm-hmm. Hello, this is Sandy Daters with the Amaral River Basin Agency. Today I'm here with Jessica Pauly uh, from HMIS Consultant. We are here today to talk to you about the homeless uh, diversion tool and how it can be used to help our clients get through the different homeless programs that we have available. Jess? Yes, so on the screen, um, we have our prevention and diversion screening tool. Um, if you have a client who calls the office and um, tells you that they are home or homeless or unstably housed, you would first fill out the um, CSBG intake. I believe they call it the STARS intake now, Sandy, is that correct? Yes. Okay, please fill that out to its completion. Um, and then you'll also include that with this screening tool on the screen when you send it to us. One thing I might know, sorry, Jess, is um, when you're completing the CSBG STARS intake to please, please, please ask them for a second contact information because we have so many homeless um, that their phones are disconnected or they run out of minutes. So please ask them for a second contact. Go ahead, Jess. And that and that contact does not have to be a phone number. If it's an email address, that's fine too. You know, any kind of way to get a hold of them is great. So email, Facebook names, um, friends names, if we can get a hold of them that way is helpful too. Um, so on this diversion screening tool, you'll notice it has the column for the date right here. So please put the date that the individual or the family called. Um, and then you would go down and answer the questions. So number one, says, are you now or will you in the next three days be living on the streets or in an emergency shelter? We ask that when you ask the clients that, you ask it just as how it's written on, this, on the page. Um, so then would mark yes or no. You would go down to question two. Are you currently in a situation or trying to flee a situation where someone is making you feel emotionally or physically unsafe? Yes or no. And then number three is, are you a veteran? Yes or no. You'll notice that then there's a stop sign. Um, it says, if answers to questions one, two, and three are no, please complete the form and refer to mainstream resources. What we mean there is go ahead and fill everything out and then go ahead and send us the diversion tool. We will try and hook them up with some mainstream resources that can help them in their situation. The second paragraph says, if the answer to question two is yes, refer to the domestic violence resources and do not proceed with this assessment. If the answer is yes to question two and clients are referred to DV resource and they choose not to use that resource, then continue this diversion. So that's a little confusing. So we'll explain that a little bit. Um, if it is someone fleeing a DV situation, please ask if they would like to be referred to the DV resources in your area. Um, if they want to stick with working with Herba, that's fine. We do have a DV program as well. That's when you would go ahead and continue this screening process. Um, the third paragraph says, if the answer to question three is yes, continue and fill out the diversion tool and make the information available to the SSVF program. Um, there's a pre-screen line number right here that you would call or have the client call, um, and then we can help them with SSVF resources as well. Jess, do you wanna explain what SSVF is? Yes, it is actually a program that helps veterans and their families. Um, and SSVF typically has a lot of other resources that maybe we don't have inside of IRBA or, or the continuum that can typically help for a lot longer for their assistance and can help for more um, household goods when somebody's homeless, um, deposits, moving in, um, costs, all of that sort of thing. You would then go to, on to question number four, and it says, where did you sleep last night? So please try and be, have them be as specific as they can. Um, if it's somebody who's just instably housed, a prevention client that's behind, that answer may be their house, their apartment. Um, if it's somebody who is homeless, it may be in my car. Um, if it is somebody that's living like on the streets or in their car, please try and get a location as well. So maybe in my vehicle at Walmart parking lot. Just try and be as specific as you can for us there. Question five says, was it a safe location? Yes or no? Um, and it says, if no, ask what made it unsafe or is there another place you can think of where you would feel safe to stay for a couple nights? Then we go to um, more prevention diversion questions. Number six says, why did you leave the place you stayed last night? Again, please have them be as specific as they can. Um, if it's somebody getting kicked out 
police put, you know, got evicted, um, got kicked out of my friend's house. If it's somebody who's just behind on their rent, just put that they can still stay there and potentially into, until the last day that would have to leave would be great. So if it's somebody that's behind, I can stay until the 31st. More details, the better. Number seven says, could you stay tonight at the same location? Yes or no. And then part A of question seven says, what would you need to help you stay where you stayed last night? So this is for somebody who maybe is having, they're behind on their rent. Um, and they think that if we talk to their landlord that could, pot could potentially let them stay there longer. Maybe they had a conflict with somebody in their household. Somebody got kicked out by their parents, that kind of thing. Um, if somebody's behind on rent, please mark that um, and the amount for how many months. This next question talks about where they stayed and if we're able to contact that person or that landlord. So it says, would it help if I contacted the person you stayed with? What is the best way to contact that person? If they say no, just leave it blank. If they say yes, go ahead and fill in. Question number eight, is there anyone else that you or your family could stay with? Friends, family, coworkers? So ask that question and click yes or no. And then we have this box here in blue. This is actually a box that you as the outreach worker would fill out. Um, question one says, is the assistance needed to prevent <clears throat> is the assistance needed to prevent or divert this household from entering the homeless system available in the community? So basically, are they able to find the resource somewhere else? Mostly that's no, we're kind of that resource for them. Um, and then if no, what was the result of the screening process for the household? And you guys would always just click referred to homeless programs, which is that second column right there. Then on the bottom, it has a, a spot for the client name and the staff name. For these, please print clearly so I can read your name. Um, we have had a couple that come through that I have trouble reading the staff name or the client name. So please print the client's name and print your name there as well. So Jess, this is a diversion that's just done over the phone. The client does not have to come into the office, is that correct? Correct, yes, they can come in the office or they can come over the phone or they can call over the phone. It just kind of depends on the situation. Most of ours now are over the phone, especially since COVID. Um, but if somebody does present in the office, it's the same form. Okay. And then once you have that diversion complete, then that would be emailed to myself, to Lynn, to Jessica, and then the outreach, excuse me, the case manager in the county that you serve. Correct. And we also have um, a consent, and con, excuse me, I'm sorry, a consent form that we would like you to fill out with them. Let me go ahead and share that as well. All right, Sandy, are you able to see the consent form? Yes, I can. So this consent form just gives us um, the client's consent to enter them into the HMIS and to share their data among other agencies that can potentially help them. So please um, give this to the client, have them read it over. And then I need you to mark one box here. Let me zoom in so you guys can see a little better. Where there's these four boxes, we need one of these boxes to be marked, okay? Um, Sometimes there may be two if it's a veteran, but typically it's only one box. So either the first one says, I agree to share all information with partnering agencies. Um, that means we could share it with anybody that's in the continuum or, or, or surrounding continuum. The second one says, I agree to only share my primary information with participating agencies. So that would be a more limited sharing. The third one says, I do not agree to share my information. And the fourth one says, I'm a veteran and do not want my information shared with the VA. So please read those carefully to the clients and have them pick one. And then also down here is where they would fill out for themselves and their household. These top lines right here, these top six are for printed names. So for instance, if it's a single mom of three, she would put her name right here and then her children, she would list them out as well, each on a separate line. And then she would sign it here, date it for today, and then the outreach worker would sign next to it with the date for today. Okay, what happens if they don't come into the office? Um, if they don't come, that's a good question. We can do a verbal consent. So if it's over the phone, you would need to read this form to the client and then 
where it says signature of client, you would just hit verbal or you would type verbal authorization or print it and then sign and date your name. Um, and these authorizations are good for five years. Typically, if we have a verbal authorization, we will also get a signed um, authorization in the future once we meet with them as a okay. case manager. So kind of walk us through the process. Once they scan that in and they put it to the outreach um, portal. Right. So you will uh, yep, you use the outreach share folder um, for your find your county. Um, and then this would need to be inside the housing folder. There is actually a housing folder and a housing counseling folder. Please put it in the housing folder for us. Um, put this document in there and then please send an email to Sandy, myself, and Lynn Carlin um, that there is a um, new diversion tool for us to, to get out of that folder. Um, once we've actually taken that out and I've entered that information in the HMIS, then I will put that in the folder that says old referrals. We keep all of those um, on the outreach share folder so we have a backup copy. Um, from there, once I enter the information into HMIS, um, we typically will contact the client within three days, three business days of receiving that diversion. Um, a case manager will reach out to them um, and kind of touch base and find out what needs they have and, and talk to them and work out a plan for hopefully helping them to better their situation. Okay, great. And if you've got any questions um, about this intake, or about the, the process itself, um, feel free to, to reach out to me. Um, my extension is 229. My email address is sandyd at urbainc.org. Um, and if you've um, got any information about different programs that are going on in your area, we'd like to know those as well. Um, we try to keep everybody up to date with the programs that are going on um, currently, and we hope to do so in the future. And we've also created kind of a cheat sheet on how to follow those steps for the diversion tool. It is in your training helps folder um, in the outreach share drive, as well as a blank copy of that diversion tool and also the HMIS consent form. Okay, great. Great. Thanks, Jess, for talking to us today and walking us through this training. And um, outreach workers, again, just give us a call if you've got any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.